And is this a setup? Did I ever meet you before? Huh? I'm Hispanic and I vote for Mr. Trump. We vote for Mr. Trump. Yes, Mr. Trump. We love you. We love you. All the way to the White House. An interesting scene yesterday in Las Vegas. Donald Trump campaigning there and a Hispanic lady got up on stage and said, hey, she wants to see him as president. Now, some critics are saying this whole thing must have been staged, but the Donald says, no, no, it was spontaneous. Meantime, the Trump campaign will roll out television ads soon, new policy proposals, and appearances by his wife and daughter. So let's talk about what went on yesterday in Las Vegas, and to do so, Skyping in from Cincinnati, the former mayor of Cincinnati, the former secretary of state in Ohio, Ken Blackwell. And from Newsmax, New York, noted radio and TV commentator and good friend, even though he's a lefty, our pal Ellis Hennigan. Uh Ken, first to you. That was a, kind of an interesting encounter yesterday. Your take on it, was it completely spontaneous and unrehearsed? I think it was. I think it's also counterintuitive to the, the narrative that the left puts out there. What they forget is that Trump, in fact, will humble himself and ask for the order. And that's, the, that's something that all Republicans need to understand. You're not going to get more Hispanic votes, more black votes, more low-income, blue-collar votes if you don't place the order. Trump will place the order. And, in fact, he is going to get his fair share of Hispanic votes. And, Ellis, before we get your response, let's hear the Donald, in his own words, reiterate that Hispanics support his candidacy. Take a listen. But that's my relationship with Hispanics. That's why when they did, they did the poll in the state, in Nevada, and I led the, and nobody believes it, but that's my relationship. Because they know I'm going to do what's the right thing. I love the Hispanic people. I employ thousands of them, and they know I'm going to do what's right. Well, what about it, Ellis? Is the Donald right? He going to have plenty of Hispanic votes? You know, anything is possible this year. I mean, there's such a thin line between humbling yourself, Ken, and humiliating yourself. And Donald, Donald walks it like a pro. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, I think it would be marvelous if he gets the Republican nomination for president. I, I, I'd like to see how this carries out into the general election. But you know what? I think you guys ought to nominate him. Well, you know, it's interesting because, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, guys on the left in 1980 were saying, oh, hey, we hope you nominate Ronald Reagan. That'll just be great for Jimmy Carter. I mean, shouldn't Ellis and the guys on the left be very careful what they wish for? Oh, oh I think so. But Trump is good for the competition. Hey, this is not a coronation. This is a competition. There are a lot of fantastic candidates in the Republican primary. That competition still sharpens steel and... Look, let me just say, Trump will place the order. He's going to go into the, the burials and the ghettos, and he's going to go into any neighborhood, and he's going to make his case. And all re Republican candidates that want to broaden the base need to take note. Well, uh, the Republicans will try to differentiate from each other. And one way Donald tried to do that yesterday uh, concerned the race for speaker. Let's listen to what Mr. Trump had to say about Kevin McCarthy. You really need somebody very, very tough and very smart. You know, smart goes with tough, not just tough. I know tough people, they're not smart. That's the worst, okay? That's the worst. You got to be smart. But we need smart, we need tough, we need the whole package. And though you didn't hear the name Kevin McCarthy, Ellis, in context, that was who the Donald was referring to. Your take on uh, the Republican search for a new speaker there on Capitol Hill. Listen, J.D., it is not a good long-run strategy to be the party that eats its own and spits them out, right? I mean, people, most normal folks, I mean, not, not the ideologically souped-up folks who would debate this stuff on television, but most normal Americans look at what's going on in that party, and they say, these people can't run their own party. They can't run themselves. How on earth are they going to run the nation of America? Very complicated business. And so every single piece of this, Donald Trump uh, playing price, is right in Las Vegas, uh, Kevin McCarthy uh, bailing out and unable to find anybody who wants to be Speaker of the House, all of that kicks the tar out of the Republican brand and makes it less likely that a Republican is going to be elected in 2016. On the other hand, Ken Blackwell, it does show that the base is being listened to by Republican members of Congress. And that's really the frustration, is it not? 30 seconds to wrap this up, Ken. Absolutely. Look, 
but there there is a bloodletting and I know a lot of folks don't understand this, but bloodletting can be healthy. It was old form medicine. It allows you to get a new stream of blood, get all of the, the stale status quo keepers out of the way and the agenda that the American people, economic growth, national security, uh, and a confidence that we once again can be the shining city on the hill that Reagan talked about. It's what the base wants, and that's what the base is going to get. And we will have to end it right there. Ken Blackwell in Cincinnati and Ellis Hennigan at Newsmax New York. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. Up next, is President Obama taking aim at gun owners, thinking about executive orders on gun control? Dr. John Lott Jr. will discuss that as Newsmax Prime continues.